If you're choosing benefits at work, you might see an option for a healthcare flexible spending account, usually just called an FSA. What's it all about? Well, let's talk about it. An FSA is a great workplace benefit that lets you use tax-free money to pay for eligible medical, dental, and vision expenses. It's a special fund just for your healthcare needs, not just for your personal healthcare needs, but also healthcare for your family and dependents too. And because the money is tax-free, you end up saving around 20% on whatever goes into your FSA. Of course, it depends on your personal tax rate and specific tax situation, but that's money that would have gone to the IRS. So you're essentially maximizing your purchasing power through tax savings on eligible expenses. And there are thousands of FSA eligible expenses. Doctor visits, prescription medications, over-the-counter medications, mental health services, eyeglasses, and even dental cleaning. You can view our list of FSA eligible expenses at healthequity.com forward slash QME. So how does it work? Well, you elect an amount to put into the account. Then each paycheck, you'll see an FSA deduction to cover a portion of the amount you elected. Over the course of your plan year, you can spend the money in the account as needed. There's one huge caveat, however. FSAs are use it or lose it accounts. In other words, FSA funds eventually expire. Unlike a health savings account or HSA, which is yours to keep every year and never expires, FSAs do have deadlines, though there are some exceptions. Like some employers will offer a grace period extension or even let you carry over unspent funds into the next plan year. I'll talk about that more in a bit. Bottom line though, Unspent FSA money does eventually expire, so that means it's really important to plan ahead. Okay, that's the big overview. Now let's go through each of these aspects in more detail. To start, you have to sign up for an FSA during your employer's designated enrollment period. If you choose to elect an FSA, you'll also have to decide at that time how much you want to contribute to your account for the plan year. There are a couple of important things to consider with this, so stick with me. Once you make your election, you can't change it without a qualifying life event. A qualifying life event is a major change in your life that allows you to make changes to your benefits outside of the regular enrollment period. Examples may include getting married, having a baby, maybe a spouse losing their health coverage, or even moving to a new area. Qualifying life events may vary by employer, so be sure to always review your plan details carefully. In any event, the point is that usually when you lock in your election amount, it's set for the whole plan year. And this is why planning is so important. Since you lose whatever you don't spend, you'll only want to contribute enough to cover expected FSA eligible expenses. You don't want to over contribute because that risks losing your money, which nobody wants. Now, the really cool thing here is that you'll get your entire FSA election amount on the first day of the plan year. So if you have a big FSA eligible expense early in the year, it's all good. You can count on the money being available right away, even though your contributions are spread out over the entire year. Now, let's say you have a lot of expected FSA eligible expenses. Well, because FSAs are tax free, the IRS limits how much you can put into the account. To see the latest FSA contribution limits, be sure to bookmark our enrollment center at healthequity.com forward slash learn. Okay, so to quickly recap, as you consider how much to elect, keep in mind how much you plan to spend, keep in mind contribution limits, and then keep in mind your specific plan details. Because remember what I said, many employers offer plan arrangements that give your FSA a little more flexibility. So be sure to check first if you have, for example, a grace period available. A grace period is extra time at the end of the plan year that you're given to spend down remaining unused funds. So if your plan year officially ends December 31st, your employer may let you still spend FSA money all the way through February in the following year. This grace period varies, so be sure to double check your plan details. Or your employer may instead offer what's called an FSA carryover. A carryover lets you keep a portion of unspent FSA funds into the next plan year. You basically get an entire extra year to spend unused funds, up to the plan specified limit. This option creates a nice little cushion in case you don't actually spend as much as you expected. Carryover amounts do vary, however, so same thing. Be sure to double check your plan details and carryover amounts for your plan. All right, now finally, let's talk for just a moment about spending your FSA. 
This is the best part, right? In most cases, you'll get a card from Health Equity, which makes it easy to spend at the pharmacy or doctor's office or really any point of sale where debit cards are accepted. However, if you don't bring your Health Equity card, no problem. You can pay out of pocket with your personal debit card or credit card. Then simply log into your online or mobile account and upload a picture of your receipt for reimbursement. When you're paying out of pocket, it's important to keep receipts because IRS rules are very strict about record keeping for this benefit. No receipt, no reimbursement. In fact, keeping receipts for all eligible expenses is really important in case we request documentation to validate those expenses. With either option though, spending your FSA is super convenient. Health Equity makes it so easy to get great tax savings without breaking a sweat. Discover more about healthcare flexible spending accounts and visit healthequity.com learn.